A good Friday ahead, Deepan. Well, uh, let's you. move on and let's focus on the Glenmark twins. They're in focus as Glenmark will divest, close to 75% stake in Glenmark Life. And Vivek joined us yesterday and he told us this is likely to happen. Bang on, Vivek. Fill us in with more details. Well, absolutely, you know, a couple of brokerages have written, you know, we'll revisit the deal and the key highlights as well. So, 75% stake sale is what is happening, you know, Glenmark Pharma selling their stake in Glenmark Life Sciences to Nirma Limited. Uh, the remainder open offer stake, you know, is being valued at close to 631 rupees a share. Now, this particular deal values Glenmark Life Sciences at eight times FY25 EV to EBITDA as per analysts. Uh, we spoke to the management, you know, they held a press meet last evening and what Glenmark Pharma told us was that they would be pairing off the entire debt from the proceeds and in fact will be next net cash positive. Uh, a couple of brokerages have written notes as well. Bofa Securities has written a note on Glenmark Life Sciences. They reiterate their buy rating on the stock. You know, they have a target price of 745 rupees a share. They are saying post the re-rating that the stock has seen in anticipation of the deal, the focus would now shift to the earnings trajectory. And in fact, what they are saying is that they are expecting high teen EBITDA growth over FI24 to FI26. Nuwama too has written a note on Glenmark Pharma. What they are saying is that Glenmark Life contributes around 11% to Glenmark Pharma's top line, 20% to EBITDA, given the 30% EBITDA margin profile that the company you know, actually enjoys. However, what they're saying is that Glenmark Life's relevance as, uh, to Glenmark Pharma's price as well as growth is in fact declining, given the fact that the company has significant other key triggers in place as well. So what they're saying is that will turn net cash positive post the deal of 2,700 crore before the settlement payouts. Okay, thank you very much uh, for... Okay, by the way, Glenmark uh, Life and Glenmark Pharma are the stocks on hand. So let's get Nimish Mehta. He tracks this stock very closely. He's the founding partner at Research Delta Advisors. Uh, Nimish, I think the overarching theme is the kind of debt reduction that we'll see on the parent company, right? Glenmark Pharma. And that's been an overhang for a while. So first on Glenmark Pharma, what do you see as the move both in the near as well as in the medium term? Yeah, thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, I think it's a good deal for Glenmark Pharma, given that the valuations are fair and as well as uh, the fact that uh, they will be able to pay down the debt, which has been a real concern for Glenmark Pharma. Uh, and uh, I think the it will it will uh, come back to a net cash positive company. Um, that said, you know, overall the U.S. generics market is facing whatever pressure we are talking about, and uh, we don't directly cover the stock, but suffice to say that. The Indian market that they enjoy uh, dominance in several sectors, I mean, several therapeutic categories, is definitely a key growth area for Glenmark and some of the niche launches that might be targeted for the U.S. market. So uh, all this, you know, with the debt uh, overhang going away is going to be a significant upside for Glenmark Pharma. Okay, all right. But you don't have an official rating on Glenmark Pharma, Nimesh? No, we don't. And what about Glenmark Life Science? Again, I mean, we would generally cover the industry and not the stock, but Glenmark Life Science, I think it's a good deal. As I said, you know, they've been able to get a good valuation. And uh, I mean, um, that does not mean that Nirma has not got the good valuation, but I think it's a fair deal for both the sides. Uh, uh, you know, API has been, the, has been in a growth trajectory as an industry. And uh, given the fact that a lot of companies want to shift away from China, this uh, kind of deal for Nirma is going to play a significant role. And uh, for de for Glenmark, as we all know, you know they really wanted to pare down the debt, and that has also been a good uh, objective. I think the objective has been met by doing this deal. So from that perspective, I think it's a good deal, win-win for both the sides, and uh, yeah, clearly good for Glenmark Life Science as well. Win-win mm. for both uh, deals, positive for Glenmark Life and Glenmark Pharma, which now turns uh, you know cash positive. Uh, but Glenmark Life is still trading much below its IPO price of 720 when it listed in August of 2021. So it's been two years, but uh, you know the deal is valuing it at 631, much lower than the IPO price. Um, so uh, Nimesh, uh, you know you look at the industry very closely, and you've been looking at it for the past many decades. You want to highlight uh, the top three trends that you see in the industry, which could determine the way you know. Uh, the themes that will play out well in the pharmaceutical sector? You spoke about generics a bit, but just highlight them in top three trends. Sure, sure. The first and foremost, as we are speaking about, is about the API. And I think API industry will uh, is definitely on a growth trajectory. Uh, however, you know, the key to understand here is the ability to backward integrate. And that is because, uh, you know, we are, I mean, most of the companies who are the buyers or most of the formulation companies are looking at uh, shifting their uh, supply away from China. 
and uh, you know even if we have api manufacturing in india that still does not mean that the dependence on china is gone because you know the raw material to api that is the intermediate and chemical still comes from china so a company who can actually backward integrate as yeah. much as possible in api is going to be a good company and a company that can sustain for long it can also yeah. sustain the price fluctuations and from that perspective as i said nirma is a good choice for glenmark pharma um All right. that is one thing that we yeah i mean you want me to elaborate on other right. yes uh, please go ahead okay so in terms of domestic i think uh, we like the space very much and uh, uh, the government's general i mean although there had been some uh, reforms here and there but uh, impetus towards uh, moving towards generic generic means that the quality considerations for indian pharma are going to become stricter and that is going to play significantly in the near term for all the bigger companies the branded companies because a lot of the lower hang uh, competition will go away got so it so these right, are anish you know, yeah we we'll, we we'll leave it at that thanks a lot actually for joining us we are running into the market opening so appreciate your thoughts here